I had a heart attack. My heart stopped. While I was, you know, having fun one night with these uh, substances, um, no one can tell me that it was the substance that was making me experience what I what I had experienced because I know what it feels like to be on a hallucinogen. I know what kind of uh, you know visuals that these things give you. This was not that in any any way shape or form you know you can try and sit there and tell me oh you know you you were you were high as a kite you know <clears throat> but um i know what being high feels like and i know what being high does you know to your perception this was not that in any way, shape, or form. I felt my heart stop. I felt my lungs stop breathing. I felt all my muscles shut down and I couldn't move. I couldn't even open my eyes. And I felt myself being pulled out of my body, physically pulled out of my body, and everything was black. I was moving fast. I just, I felt the sensation of moving so fast. And then I see this light in front of me. It's like this, uh, this pinpoint of light. gets bigger and bigger and bigger the faster I'm moving towards it and then this light is right in front of me it's so bright I can't even look at it I'm, I'm looking down I instantly knew because I asked in my head I was I was I was like oh, is this is this him is this you know could this be him it, where where am I, first of all, you know, because being an atheist, you're not going to accept immediately that you're standing in front of an intelligent designer, the, the, the Alpha and Omega, the creator of you and I and everything that we stand on and breathe in and there was no comprehending it until he answered that question for me. And I felt his presence. It was pure warmth. It was pure love. It was pure peace. And it just permeated my entire being. I felt it. It, it was. It was. It's. Uh, it's an indescribable feeling. It's indescribable. You know, my, my whole life, just every decision I made. Every why God was being replayed in my head. Not in my head, it was being replayed in front of me. You know, and I was still skeptical. So I asked him a question that was, it was silly to him and it's silly to me now too. But I asked him, I said, God, why is there so much evil in the world? Why is there so much hatred and so much pain? Right? And he told me, if you're not with me, you're with him. His presence left. All the light it was replaced with a pitch black darkness. The warmth that I felt being in his presence was replaced with a frigid cold. 
If you think you know what hopelessness is, you don't know what hopelessness is until you watch your creator walk away from you. Until you feel the love of our Father in heaven leave you forever. And then I see these eyes open up in front of me, these bright glowing red eyes. And um, just terrifying, this grin, this ear to ear grin, this huge grin. Inhuman teeth, these teeth are not like, like human teeth, they're like, like a rabid dog, just razor sharp teeth. Like, sh no, not a rabbit dog, like a, like a shark. And these beings are big, they're big. Like, they're giants, like literal giants. Literal giants. And he told me, you're, you're staying here with me forever. You're never getting out of this place. And then two more pairs on either side of him of eyes open and huge grins. And then two more on either side of the three. I try to get up to run. One pinned me down for each of my limbs. And the first one started cutting me up and opening me up. It swiped across my chest and my whole chest opened up. They pulled all my insides out. They chopped my limbs off, chopped them into little pieces, ripping them to shreds. They ripped my eyes out. I screamed. They pulled my tongue all the way out and cut it out. And they were reminding me the whole time of every thing I did in my life. Every time I took my life for granted. Every time I cursed my mom, I cursed my dad. Every time I lied to my mom, to my dad. Every time, every time I blasphemed God's name. Every time I blamed something for something that I did to myself, it was being repaid to me. And as much as it hurt, and oh, it hurt, I felt everything, everything. I felt everything. It's an unimaginable, unimaginable type of pain. This, this brain that we have, this physical body that we have, the senses are limited. It's, they're limited. They're limited to, to, to synapse and, and, and firings of, of, of flesh, right? When, you, when you're taken out of the flesh vessel, when you take the meat goggles off, you're taken out of the flesh simulation. You get what I'm saying? And you're, you're thrust into re actual reality. Everything that happens in the physical happens first in the spiritual. So this, this is like, it's like, a, it's like a resonance of what happens in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, the spiritual first. This is like a, uh, it's like, um, it's a reflection. So when, when pain is being inflicted upon your, your very soul, your very being, it's true pain, it's the purest, it's the purest pain you can experience. And they were, they were brutalizing me. They were brutalizing me. 
for hours, for hours and hours, and I would come back together. I'd come back together, my body would come back, my arms would come back, my legs, all the cuts would close shut, and they would start all over again. Unending, no mercy, no hope. There's nothing left when you go down there. There's nothing left. It's the, it's, it's the final destination. You know, you, you, you get two choices. Eternal damnation or eternal life. The way I lived my life, I chose for myself eternal damnation. Everybody has a choice. Everybody has a choice. That was the price I paid for turning away from God. Because I was angry at him. When really I should have been mad at myself because I did it to myself. You know, we, we want to blame God for, for the, the bad things that happen to our life and we never thank him for the good things that happen in our lives. We never thank him. You want to say, God, why? <laughs> Never say that, ever. Never let those words come out of your mouth, please. Because we do it to ourselves. I'm not trying to put anybody down. I'm not trying to, you know, we all have things we got to work on. <laughs> Nobody on this planet was perfect except for Jesus Christ. And I didn't know him. I died without truly knowing him. I died assuming that I knew who he was. And I blasphemed his name because I didn't know who he was. And in my utter pain, through all the torture that I endured and how I screamed his name. I screamed it out. I screamed, Jesus Christ, please save me. Get me out of here. This was my final chance. These things backed away from me and I felt a warm hand on the back of my neck. <laughs> And he pulled me out of there. And he pulled me out of there. He pulled me from hell after I made my bed in there. I made my bed in hell. And he had mercy on me. Imagine what he can do for you. You know, and, and I 
I wish I could tell you that I turned around and became a perfect model Christian. It took a long time for me to even realize what happened to me actually happened to me. I was trying to block it out of my mind because every time I remembered it, it broke me down. And I could feel these things that tortured me. They were watching around the corner, you know. They hated that I made it out of their clutches. They hated that because I had a testimony and they weren't going to let me share it with people. It's been two years and I haven't been able to open my mouth about this. And share it publicly. Because I would break down. I would cry. I wanted to forget so badly. I wanted to tell myself, no, you know, like, that didn't, that, that couldn't have happened. But slowly, slowly, God was working on me. He was working on me. He never stopped. He never stopped believing in me. Even, even someone like me, even someone who blasphemed his name, even someone who ran away from him, even someone who didn't want to believe. I'm indebted to him for the rest of my life, and I'm so happy he saved me. I'm so happy he saved me. I just haven't been the same since. I haven't been the same. He showed me how to read his word. And it came out of nowhere, you know, like I've never ever in my life, I had never, up to this point that I'm about to tell you, I had never looked up anything related to the Bible, but the book of Psalms showed up in my suggested videos, just out of nowhere, out of nowhere. One night I couldn't sleep because I felt them. These things, I just felt pure fear and I, I heard them again, they were mocking me. I was falling asleep and I could hear them. They wouldn't let me sleep. <clears throat> they were going to take me again. But I played the book of Psalms and they went away. You know, I had never willingly read the Bible in my life, you know, and what I describe to you right now is the outer darkness, and I had no idea until it happened to me, and I opened a Bible, and I opened my mom's Bible, and I flipped to the page. In Matthew, speaking of the outer darkness, Weeping and gnashing of teeth. You can do nothing down there but bawl your eyes out. And scream and cry through your chattering teeth. That's all there's left to do. That's all there's left to do. I'm lucky I got a second chance. I'm so lucky I got a second chance. 